booktube, Nikki here with a combined haul for you today. See what happened is in February I bought like four books. Wow, such self-control, very amazed. So I figured I'd buy a few more books in March, combine them into a nice little haul. But then I have 15 books to show you. So apparently in March I just bought all of the books. I'm definitely trying to cut down on the amount of books that I buy. So before I can buy new books I have to read some of my older books. So we'll see how that goes. But let's just get into these books because I'm really excited to show them to you. I actually bought this one last year but didn't receive it until this month and that is Love and First Sight by Josh Sundquist. I got this as part of the Project for Awesome Indiegogo and it was a perk for the amount that I donated. So it's signed by Josh Sundquist which is very cool. I really enjoyed We Should Hang Out Sometime. I have his memoir called I Just Don't Fall I think but this is his first fiction book and I'm really excited to read it. It's about a boy who is blind. I think he's about to have an operation so that he can see. He's in love with this girl and it sounds like his friends have been a little less than honest about her appearance. It sounds really interesting and I can't wait to read it. I also picked up Who's Afraid 2 by Maria Lewis. Maria Lewis is so cool. I met her at a convention last year and I'm going to meet her again at a convention coming up soon and this just came out so I picked it up so I could get it signed. It's a new adult urban fantasy and in the first book we meet Tommy Grayson and she finds out that her family lineage includes werewolves. It's pretty obvious. That's not a spoiler. Werewolves. It's a werewolf book. I very much enjoyed the first one. Also Maria Lewis was the first person at the convention to correctly identify my costume as Bombshell Batwoman and not Batgirl. So I just really appreciated that because after a day of being called Batgirl and Nightwing, it's like, nah man, that's not what I am. So I haven't had a chance to read this yet, but I'm very much looking forward to it. The protagonist has like blue hair and wears like 80s t-shirts and is just a really cool person and I want to be friends with not only Maria Lewis, but Tommy Grayson. Like I said, Maria Lewis is gonna be at a convention. She's gonna be at the Gold Coast Supernova coming up on the 21st and 2nd of April. And so will Patricia Briggs, who wrote Moon Called, which is a book that I bought. I've started reading it. It's not what I expected at all, but then again, I didn't know what to expect, so I didn't even know how I feel about this. This is another new adult urban fantasy, which is not a genre I read heaps of. It's about Mercy Thompson, who's a mechanic, coyote, where coyote, coyote? She turns into a coyote, and then there's werewolves and vampires. So there's quite the array of different paranormal creatures. She gives this young guy who's a werewolf a job, and then things go awry, and all sorts of dangerousness ensues. I think there are like 10 books in this series, so it's a longer series than I was expecting. I picked up Outside In by Marie V. Snyder. I read Inside Out earlier this year and I'm all about finishing things that I start. So this is a duology, so I already own the entire series. High five to me. This is a dystopian series following a girl named Trella. Trella is a scrub so she's on the lowest rung of society and everyone lives inside. There is no outside. At the end of the first book there's like a huge discovery they make and I really want to read this one to figure out what is going on. I thought I was finished buying books. I thought that was it. I was done. I was satisfied. Got my new releases. Completed a series. Done. I didn't even walk into the bookshop. Okay? I didn't walk into the bookshop because I knew that I would not be able to resist. I was just walking past and there was a table and it was like three books for $15. And I was like, that's redonkulous. For reference, in Australia, that's $15. Pretty good for a new paperback, all right? Pretty good. So I had a good look at this table and I vowed to only buy books that were actually on my giant Goodreads list of books that I'd actually looked at and decided, yes, I'd like to read that. And it took me a while. I could have picked up more books, but I found three that I super wanted to buy. I picked up Four by Veronica Roth. This is, I think, four short stories about the character named Four set throughout the Divergent trilogy. I enjoyed the Divergent trilogy, I think it's a lot of fun. And I've been considering buying this for ages, but I just sort of hadn't. Picked up Dark Mouth by Shane Hegarty. I looked at this in like Target and it was like nine bucks and I was considering picking it up, but it didn't have this cover. It had a far less cool cover. And on the front of this one, Owen Colfer blurbed it. And if you watched my wrap up, you know how much I love Owen Colfer. It's about a boy named Finn and he lives in a town that gets overrun by monsters, I think. And I don't know whether he's actually the last monster hunter or he just decides that he's the last monster hunter, but he takes it upon himself to hunt the monsters. It looks like it incorporates some cool illustrations and it just seems like a really fun book. So hopefully this will be another like Skullduggery Pleasant goofy adventure. I'm really hoping that this one pans out. I think there's a second book out already. So I don't know how that works because I've never seen this before. I don't know, maybe it only just got published in Australia. I don't know, man, but we'll see. Hopefully it's good. And then this third book is the reason why I said, yes, I'm gonna buy three books today because I really wanted this one. And that is Crenshaw by Catherine Applegate. Catherine 
Applegate wrote the Animorph series, which I am currently rereading, which I love. She also has written a bunch of other stuff. And this one is about a little boy who comes from a poor family and has a imaginary friend that is also a giant cat. I think we all need a giant cat imaginary friend. So those are all the novels that I bought, but I did buy a bunch of comic books. I picked up Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Volume 2. This is by Kyla Higgins and Henry Prosecchia and a bunch of other contributors. And this being Volume 2 follows on from Volume 1. What? Who would have guessed? So we're still following the origin of the green Power Ranger. I almost said Green Lantern. That's not what it is. And as far as I know, it has absolutely nothing to do with the movie, except that it's also Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I still haven't seen the movie. I should, because it's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, which is my Power Rangers, okay? There's been like 75,000 series of Power Rangers, but Mighty Morphin is where it all started. I was always a Kimberly fan, okay? Pink Ranger is my homegirl, but I think this is a really fun modernization of the series and I really enjoyed the first one, so I'm keen to read this one. I picked up a couple more Rebirth titles because I'm shameless and I'm feeling the DC love at the moment. So I picked up volume one of Wonder Woman, The Lies by Greg Rucker, Liam Sharp, and Laura Martin. I've read this, I talked about it in February's wrap up. If you're looking to start reading Wonder Woman with Rebirth, I would actually recommend waiting for the second volume to come out because volume one collects the odd issues up to 11, volume two who collects the even ones and the even ones were flashbacks to her origin story where she began so if you want an origin story to start with you want volume two but so far I'm hopeful for the series I enjoyed this one ready for number two I also picked up volume one of Batgirl Rebirth this is by Hope Larson, Ralph Albuquerque and Dave McRae this is called Beyond Burnside and I think I need to read Batgirl of Burnside maybe before I read this I actually have the first volume on my shelf I'm just terrible and I haven't read it. But this one sees Batgirl go international. So she goes from like Japan to Singapore and all around. So like I said, I might read the Batgirl I forgot before I read this one, but I've heard really great things about Hope Larson in particular. So I'm keen to have this on my shelf. And the cover is great. Look at all the pink. Look at all the pink. I picked this next one up the day that it came out and I can't believe I haven't read it yet. I'm so terrible. This is DC Comics Bombshells by Marguerite Bennett, Mirka Aldolfo and Laura Braga. I'm a huge fan of this series, if you can't tell from my bomb shelf right here. And this is the series that sees our favorite DC heroines in an alternate World War II kicking butt, led by Wonder Woman. So good. And the volume two shattered my emotions. It was so beautiful. Oh my gosh. So I can't wait to read this. And this collects issues 13 to 18 and I started collecting the single issues I think at 18. I'm trying to collect the whole series. But this means that I can potentially actually read myself up to speed on this series and actually be up to date with a comic book series for once in my life. For once in my life. I'm all kinds of ready to read this. In my January haul, I talked about a sale that my comic book shop had and I bought these, but I forgot to pick them up until the middle of February because I'm so terrible. I hope my comic book shop doesn't have too many people like me because I order things online to pick up and then I like forget about them for a couple of weeks. I'm like, oh, hey, I think I have an online order. And they're like, yeah, you have three. Sorry. Sorry guys. But the last week of that sale, they had Image Comics on sale, so I picked up some Morning Glories. These are by Nick Spencer and Joe Eisma. But I got volume six and volume eight. I have the first five volumes. I've read the first four, so I'm planning on continuing this series. This is one of the series that I started and never finished and really want to get back into. This is a really weird series. I think it's compared a lot to the TV show Lost, and I think that's pretty much what you get. They're not on an island, they're in a boarding school. But it's really mysterious and weird, and for every question that's answered, you get five more questions thrown at you like what is going on. They are for mature readers but I don't really think they'd appeal to kids anyway because it's so weird. But I think about this series from time to time and I'm like whatever happened to all of those characters? I will never know unless I read the freaking books. And last but not least I just bought two books that I was like yo I need these on my shelves. I don't know why they're not in my collection. There's like a gaping hole where they should be. The first one is The Invincible Iron Man Extremis by Warren Ellis and Artie Granov. This is a super important book in the world of Iron Man. Okay if you're gonna read one Iron Man comic and you're a fan of the movies I'd pick this one because firstly the story is actually incorporated into the movies the first one but especially the third one and secondly Adi Granov's version of the costume is pretty much the movie costume Jean Favreau was like yo man that looks like a really cool version of the costume I'm gonna find this guy and he's gonna consult on the movie and tell us how to make it so I'm very much looking forward to actually reading this because I know all about it but I haven't actually read it before and to finally fill in this hole in my collection and in my heart and then finally I got watch 
Watchmen by Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons. I'm not 100% sure if this is gonna be my jam. Okay, I don't know if it's gonna be my jam sandwich. I've recently been reading a lot about the history of comic books and I find it really fascinating. And this came at a really important time in comic books because we were seeing graphic novels and seeing like long form stuff coming out and people were taking these stories as literature. And this is heralded as not only like a great comic book but a great piece of literature in general. I've somehow managed to remain like unspoiled in this storyline. I have no idea what happens. I haven't seen the Watchmen movie. I know this one's definitely another one that's not for kids, but again, I don't think it'll appeal. I didn't really realize till I got this, there's such a long comic book. And I just read the latest previews that there's gonna be an annotated version coming out in hardcover, and I was like, maybe I should have got that. But then, what if I don't like it? That'd be a waste of money. My point is, I have it now, I'll read it eventually, filled in a gap in my collection, can now sleep in peace. Those are all the books that I bought in the months of March and January. <laughs> Those aren't even consecutive months. Those are all the books that I bought in February and March. Let me know in the comments below if you've read any of those. What should I read first? I'm gonna go and try and do some bookshelf Tetris to try and fit these guys on my shelves. And I will see you next time. But in the meantime, let me know in the comments below. Have you seen Power Rangers? Is it any good? Because I haven't seen it. I prefer the old costumes for sure, but half of that's probably nostalgia. Anyway, let me know because this is a vital piece of information that I need. Pretty sure like five planes have flown over my house since I started. Like really rude, rude, rude.